What's up guys? Just the other day I put together a video on the strategy I would utilize how to defeat Rod Tang based on his fight versus Jonathan Haggerty number two. Now there are many requests to keep this series going, keep moving forward and Adesanya, how to defeat him was a very popular request. So today because UFC 271 is coming up on February 12th and there's going to be a rematch between Adesanya and Whitaker. We're going to look back at their first fight and from the footage I'm going to give you examples. If I was training Whitaker or if I was at Adesanya's weight class how I would have gone about preparing for him and what my game plan might be. All right, even though the first fight ended in under two rounds, we still have lots of little clips to go through today. And keep in mind, if you guys like this series, if you want more like it, giving the video a like is gonna be that much more likely to keep it going because I can see you guys are really wanting more and more information from this series. We could cover so many awesome guys like how to beat Bukau, how to beat Petrosian. That's gonna be a really hard one. Even though he did get knocked out in his last fight, he is still a puzzle to solve. So there's so many things that we can do. So give the video a like if you guys have not already. And let's move on to the first point from Whitaker Adesanya number one. The first thing I wanna point out is something that Israel Adesanya does in the first round, which is a setup which is very dangerous to fall into. Now what Izzy does here is he just gives a little fake, just a little twitch, which makes Whitaker jump backwards. Now from there, the space between them is very substantial. Izzy knows he is very safe in this position. So as soon as Whitaker goes on the attack, Adesanya is able to just back up because there's so much distance created. This faking that he does is something you have to get very comfortable with because if every time he fakes and you back up entirely, it's going to keep him at that range which he always wants to be at because he's big on backing up or running away from multiple shots. It makes it very hard to catch him in combinations. So you have to be very comfortable. You have to do a lot of training with fakes being thrown at you so you can recognize the difference between a legit attack and a fake and have a great understanding of distance because if the guy is let's say here versus here that tiny little bit could be an indication whether the guy will be doing a proper attack or a fake. Now moving on but kind of similar to what we were just saying if you want to catch Izzy it's best sometimes to wait for him to move forward and Whitaker showed us that multiple times in the last fight because as we just said he's good at faking and he's very good at backing up. But sometimes when you let somebody move to you, when you let them throw, and that's when you decide to throw back, that is a fantastic way to then follow up with the rest of your combo. You want to make sure when they approach, it's not just one, it's one once you hit them, then you start following up, and then when they're within range, that's when you go on the attack. I think that is a big key to beat Adesanya. Wait for him to attack you, and then go on the counters. But there's lots of other things we have to keep in mind when talking about this point. We'll get to them in future upcoming video clips. Now, the next thing about Adesanya is when he throws, his style is very high on the chin. And as we just talked about, waiting for him to attack is fantastic. And then because he keeps his chin high, getting those counters off is going to be paramount. So you've got to be training in the gym, block the shot, hit back block the shot, hit back. And Izzy is not scared to fire back in the pocket either. So you have to be very, very diligent about not keeping your jaw really high and exposed like his is. Now, multiple times in this fight, we see Whitaker engage his jab and he gets his head off the center line. And it works very nicely for him. And this is something that you need to do as the shorter fighter. And it shows you that even somebody, you know, as skilled as Adesanya, it still works against him. So it's something that hopefully Whitaker will have been drilling constantly. Head off the center line so you don't take that initial shot. If for some reason Adesanya doesn't back up from there, then you would follow with the rest. But very often, you're going to throw your shot, he's going to be gone. But that's still a scoring opportunity, and it means his shot is missing when you simply move your head off that center point. Now Adesanya is a master at trying to get people to fight his fight. And one of the instances of him doing that is in this clip where he drops the weight heavy on the front leg and puts his head forward. When he goes to this position here, he's trying to get you to hit him in the head. He's either going to explode backwards because he has loads of weight off his front leg. He's going to explode backwards and get out of range. Or he's waiting for you to come forward so he can get a counter shot off. When somebody gives you a gift, they give you their head and they're like, here, 
go to my head. That's exactly what you do not want to do. So in this instance, or if I was Whitaker's coach, I would be saying every time he does this, every time he leans forward, chop his lead leg. That's all I want you to do. Now he has those long arms, so it makes it a little bit difficult, but if you kind of fake and get some sort of reaction and then chop down to the leg or you attack down to the body instead, the main idea here is you're not fighting the way Adesanya wants you to fight. He's giving you something to aim for. He's going, hit me in the jaw, hit me in the jaw. And you go, no, I'm gonna hit you somewhere else. That is smart fighting and that's not getting caught in Adesanya baiting you which is a big part of his game. Next up, I want to talk about Israel Adesanya in the middle of the ring because multiple times in this fight, we see Robert Whitaker come forward with combinations. He lets those hands go. And as he does in the middle of the ring, Adesanya very simply moves backwards, move backwards, move backwards, and he's gone and nothing lands. A general rule of thumb for beating Adesanya will be don't throw combinations. Don't try and go on a full attack full steamroll attack until you start to get him closer to the cage side. Once he's closer to the cage side, he's gonna have to back up against it and then work on taking an angle, but that's harder to escape as opposed to him just going backwards. So a big part of beating Adesanya, just be very careful about throwing combinations where he has lots of room to back up. Now, as we already talked about, Adesanya is very, very good at being evasive. What you have to do with somebody like this is you have to utilize height fakes. So you fake at one height and then you throw at a different height. This means that if somebody like Adesanya sees a shot coming, he goes, Hoo! then the body and the legs are very, very open. And it's just a matter of not fully committing to attacking at one shot. You go, okay, I'm going to throw, but if I see him move, I'm going to go to a different height. Super important. And within Izzy, it's something that you have to take advantage of because trying to catch him with just one straight up shot just does not work. Now in this next clip, we see how hard it is to catch Izzy in the head, mostly because he can lean back so far. It's very, very interesting the way he leans backwards. It's almost like he's just going into pretty, a uh, pretty subtle limbo. And because he's doing that, chances of catching him in the head without extending your arm super far and having it be fairly weak is a very minimal chance. But what you can do when he starts fading back is make sure that you attack the body and the leg, anything below the jaw. As soon as somebody leans back here, anything below the jaw is gonna land. It has to land, there's not much the guy can do aside from trying to utilize his arms to block. His legs are definitely stuck to the ground. And when we look at the very end of the fight, we see Izzy leaning way backwards, but he's still dangerous here because he can throw shots from the super reclined position. So what you have to be very careful of with Izzy is getting into brawls because he'll just fade back and he'll keep throwing. You have to be careful getting into brawls and keeping your head at the same height. He, when he's here, is getting good power up to this position, but I think it would be very awkward trying to go much lower, especially since the fact that he is quite a bit taller than Whitaker, so he's gonna be throwing down very low if Whitaker or anybody shorter remembers as they engage to get their head dropping. You don't wanna keep it right here where a knee might come up, but as you throw, you keep your head down, lower your chin tucked, and you have to stay very, very safe and well positioned when you decide to throw on Adesanya and when he goes stationary because he very well might throw back and his head might be way out of position. Overall, Israel Adesanya is a very hard fighter to crack. And me only looking at one fight, looking at what he did with Whitaker in eight minutes, essentially, made it even harder for me to break down exactly what would be the ideal way to defeat this guy, especially when we see that his leg kicks are so good. He didn't even throw many in this fight, so I couldn't really get into talking about that. But yes, very difficult fighter, difficult task trying to break him down with only eight minutes and one opponent. But overall, it would give you guys a little bit of insight on how I think Robert Whitaker should have adjusted the changes he should have made since the last fight if he wants to get the win coming up on February 12th at UFC 271. If you guys had Whitaker's ear for 10 seconds and you could give him one tip for his upcoming fight, what would it be? Would you pick one of the tips that I gave you today, one of those in particular, and utilize that as your go-to information for him? Or do you have your own tip? If so, drop it in the comments. I'd be interested to hear what you guys have to say about defeating this UFC middleweight champion. If you guys enjoyed the episode, give it a like to make sure more videos in the series get made. If you haven't already, join the channel and get subscribed. As always guys, train hard. I'll see you back here soon for another video.